Hey, what's going on? Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how to rebuild your baseball swing because now is the perfect time, especially as we wind down this year and tryouts are right around the corner. If you're gonna rebuild your swing, then now is the time to really dial in your mechanics and get yourself ready for tryouts and ready to you know, start the year off on a positive note, start the year off strong instead of starting the year slow and then trying to rebuild and change some things from there. So without further ado, Today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to rebuild your baseball swing. All right, so the very first piece of advice I have for you when it comes to rebuilding your swing is a lot of the times when you hear rebuild something, it's like, oh no, everything's wrong and we're starting from scratch. At the end of the day, guys, you know, you're not starting from scratch. You're an experienced baseball player. You've swung a baseball bat before, so it's not the end of the world. Maybe you're just going through something right now, right? Maybe you're struggling a little bit at the plate. Maybe you're in a little bit of a slump and it, it's time to rebuild. But you know what that means? The very first piece of advice is simplify. Simplify, simplify, keep things simple. Baseball is such a simple game, right? There's a pitcher on the mound who's gonna try to throw the ball over the plate and at the end of the day, our job is to try to, with this object that we have in our hands, our baseball bat, we're trying to square the ball up and then hit it where they ain't. I mean, it's a very, very simple game. And then, you know, with all that simplicity, we, we tend to overcomplicate things when we're talking about mechanics and this and that. And so I promise you, a large reason for your struggles at the plate or, you know, uh, why you're slumping right now is because probably you're just thinking about way too much. And so that's the very first piece to rebuilding your swing. I want you to simplify, simplify, simplify. Baseball is a simple game. It's about developing a good foundation and it's about mastering the fundamentals. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about uh, actually fixing our swing, okay? The very first thing that you need to develop is a solid base. And when I'm talking about base, I'm talking about number one, your stance, so how you stand in the batter's box, and number two, your grip. All right, those two things kind of I would consider the base. All right, so you want to make sure, you know, with your grip, as simple as the grip is, and you're probably thinking, you know, I've, I've I know how to grip a baseball bat. That's so elementary, right? But again, it's about going back to the fundamentals and the basics. And so are you truly holding the bat with a good grip? Are you holding the bat out in your fingertips or have you let that bat kind of sink down deep into your palms and now that just feels comfortable to you when in reality you're leaving a lot of bat speed and bat control on the table. So make sure the bat's in your fingertips. Make sure, you know, whether you want to align your door knocking knuckles or the box grip, I personally like kind of uh, splitting the difference between those two, but make sure that you have a solid grip. That's the first thing. I know that it's elementary, but if you can't even get the grip right, then it doesn't matter about what you do past that point. Does that make sense? Okay, so we got our good grip. Now, as a solid, you know, foundation, a solid base in terms of our stance. As I talk about in all of my videos, I think that the stance is truly just a starting point. But if you're struggling at the plate, go back to a simple stance. And a simple stance would be an athletic position. So no matter what sport you're playing, defense and basketball, right? Linebacker and football, it really doesn't matter. The traditional athletic position is not with your feet super narrow like this. It's also not wide like this where you can't move. A traditional athletic position is a little bit wider than shoulder width. We've got some flex in our knees and our feet are square, right? You wouldn't play basketball, defense and basketball typically unless you're trying to force a guy one way. You wouldn't play with one foot in front of the other. So when we're hitting, again, I, I know that all hitters and all stances are different. If open works for you or close works for you, do that. But what I'm saying is we're simplifying here. If you wouldn't do that in basketball, then why would you shift your feet like that in baseball, right? And so we got our athletic position. Our feet are slightly wider than shoulder width. You wanna have some flex in your knees. You don't wanna have your knees straight locked out like this. Flex in your knees. Typically, I teach to have uh, just your, your, your regular stance, not open, not closed, but a square stance. Your feet are square towards the pitcher. So that's what you do with your lower half. That's pretty much it, right? And then with your upper body, you wanna make sure that you have some sort of a spine angle, right? That has to do with our posture. You don't want to have your back completely standing up like this. We also don't want to be hunched over like this. So have a decent spine angle. And however we start with our spine angle, we're going to try to maintain that spine angle, that posture throughout our entire swing. All right. So we start there. Now, what do we do with our hands? Our hands, again, this is kind of a, you know, this is one of those areas where it's whatever's comfortable for you. For starters, I don't recommend having your hands in here. I don't recommend having them out here like this. I recommend having them 
you know, about shoulder height and a little bit back here. Okay, again, not back here where my front arm's extended, not in here like this, not crazy high, not crazy low. For starters, for rebuilding your swing, have it about shoulder height, have them back here a little bit to where they can still go back a little bit. Again, this is not strength or straight out like this, but they're not so far in here uh, that you have a, a ton of distance to gain, okay? So your hands are here like this, and I recommend the knob of your bat starting that facing down towards the catcher because if this is the, the angle that our bat needs to get into in the launch position then why not just start there okay so that's our lower half we got our good posture we've got our hands in a comfortable spot uh, our elbow height you know your elbow some players like it up some players like it a little bit more down I would just recommend avoid the extremes okay so I don't think that you should have your elbow completely your back elbow completely tucked in like this I also don't think it should be any higher than here okay and so elbow up is a little bit more comfortable for me but however you want to whatever is comfortable for you i'm fine with anything just try to avoid the extremes right last thing with your stance with this solid base that we're building that i want to make sure that a lot of hitters kind of breeze over and this is such a big deal when it comes to actually seeing the baseball where's your head focus on your head what is your head doing what are your eyes doing because if you can't see the baseball and recognize the location and the spin and all that kind of stuff what pitch is coming your way if it's a ball or a strike if you should swing or not you're not gonna be a good hitter right and so we can do all this right in our swing and screw up this last thing and and we're screwed at the plate right and so I want you to make sure that you you turn your chin towards the pitcher and so you're seeing the pitcher and the ball with both eyes a common problem that I see in stance is players look good physically with the body but their head is kind of cocked like this and really with this back eye here my right eye right now if i'm looking like this I'm, I'm seeing the bridge of my nose here and that's no good because i'm only hitting basically with this front eye and my eyes don't work best at an angle like this my eyes work best when they're flat right so make sure your eyes are flat and just turn your chin towards the pitcher even if that means when you step in the batter's box putting your hand on your chest here like this. I used to do this and turn this way. That way you can ensure that both eyes are on the baseball and they're flat. So that's our solid foundation, our solid base. So the next thing we wanna focus on after we have a really good stance is obviously our first move is our load. And so I just really wanna, we'll breeze through this. I'm not gonna go in depth on the load and the stride and everything. I know you know how to do that, but I wanna make sure that your load, your gather is nice and smooth and controlled because a common problem that I see with a lot of players that would lead them to wanting to rebuild their swing, right, when they're struggling, is the fact that their load is just so herky-jerky and they're moving so much. So if you have too much movement in your swing, that's not a good thing because your eyes are gonna be dancing all over the place. Just pay attention to, if I'm moving all over the place like this, and I don't mind a little bit of motion. I think you have to have a little bit of movement when you're just looking towards the pitcher when he's getting ready to deliver the pitch. You can't be still as a statue, but when you get too much motion and that carries over to your load and your load, you're loading like crazy and your head's moving. I mean, look at my head right now. If this is my starting position and I allow my head to move this much in my load and this much in my stride, my eyes have literally moved feet. They've moved all over the place. Good luck picking up you know, what pitch is coming, what location, all that kind of stuff. And so load, the load is a timing mechanism, right? The load is how, you know, we time the pitcher. I want to make sure that you're dancing with the pitcher. Okay, so we're nice and loose, we're relaxed, we're dancing with the pitcher, and a smooth and controlled load. Smooth and controlled like this. A lot of players, especially when there's a fast pitcher on the mound, that's when they speed things up, right? And so if you're going up a level, maybe from, you know, middle school age to all of a sudden you're uh, high school or you go from the freshman high school team to JV or JV to varsity or whatever, a lot of times you're like, oh no, this, these pitchers are a little bit more advanced now. I better speed everything up. And that's when you get into problems, right? And so your load smooth and controlled and it's better to just start early. You can start early and go nice and slow and then explode. You can literally, now not every single hitter is gonna wanna do this. It might not be comfortable for you, but you can literally load at a pace like load, boom and then you explode if that's comfortable for you so it's all about it's not about getting your front foot down early it's about really just loading early starting everything early getting this front foot up early and then getting it down on time all right so that's load that's the next area of emphasis is your load 
So we're making some real progress now. We've got a great foundation, a great stance. We got a smooth and controlled load. And then now we stride towards the pitcher. And when our front foot hits the ground, that's what's considered a launch position. Now this is a major area of rebuild. If you're struggling at the plate, this is an area you really wanna emphasize the launch position. And then what we'll talk about in a second, how you look at the point of contact, but launch position. How I talked about every hitter stands a little bit differently, right? Every stance is a little different. Some hitters like their hands in different spots and open and close and this and that. It doesn't really matter how you start per se in the batter's box, but it does matter how you look at the launch position. 99% of successful hitters that you look at all look the exact same or very, very similar in the launch position. And so a common problem that I would see in the launch position is something like, you know, your stance looks good, and then your load looks good, your stride looks good, and then at the launch position, maybe your knob of your baseball bat is facing towards, I don't know, the first base dugout or the, you know, first base side on deck circle. Instead of being down towards the catcher like this, it's facing there like that. That's a problem with your launch position. That's gonna cause a bunch of other issues. Or what if it's, you, you know, you load and you stride, and your knob is facing the pitcher like this, because players think, well, if my knob's facing the pitcher, it's easier to get on playing with the pitch. Well, not really, your elbow's gonna drop, you're gonna dump your barrel, and you're gonna be underneath everything like that. So there are certain absolutes with your launch position that I wanna make sure that you check. Another one, when your front foot lands, if you land with it closed like this, that's really gonna hinder your hip rotation. We don't wanna land with it closed like this. We also don't wanna land with it completely open like this. We wanna land with our front foot about 45 degrees open, okay? So that's the first thing. Our feet are about as wide as my baseball bat. If I were to put my baseball bat, that's about the distance that my feet are apart. My front foot's slightly open, about 45 degrees. I'm in an athletic position. I'm not standing up tall, right? I'm sunk down into an athletic position. My eyes are obviously on the baseball at this point. My knob is facing the catcher. I've got good length in this front arm. I can feel a lat stretch here. This is a really good launch position. And pay attention to with your front foot. In the launch position, right, my, my front heel has not dropped yet. I'm still on the ball of my foot. We don't really wanna land flat-footed, or even worse, on our heel. And then another important component, and this is, this is big time, especially with younger hitters, but really hitters of any age, you can get into a bad habit of striding in towards the plate without even really noticing or striding stepping in the bucket and neither one of those are good so if you're struggling at the plate that's a huge area of rebuild you might be thinking well my grip's fine my stance is fine what am i doing wrong look at your launch position the next area i really want you to focus on when you're rebuilding your swing is how do you look when you actually hit the ball right at the point of contact what do you look like because as we talked about take a million different hitters and they're going to have a million different stances but they should all have a very very or at least the good hitters should all have a very good very similar launch position which is, which we just covered and then they should all look very very similar at the point of contact as well so i'm just going to really quickly give you a couple key things to look at Number one, where are you hitting the baseball? And this is tricky because a lot of the times, you know, you can analyze a, a hitter from the side from video and you might be thinking, well, he's not hitting the ball in the right spot, but it's tough unless you know the pitch location. And so, um, you, know, you know, but that's for starters, where are you hitting the ball? On a pitch that's in the middle of the plate, you should make contact slightly out in front of your, you know, front foot. It shouldn't be so far out in front to where, you know, you're out here like this, right? but you also shouldn't make contact with that ball in here like this. And so if you're working on a tee, position your, your tee a little bit in front of your front foot, and that's gonna allow you to make contact right where we wanna make contact, which is even or slightly in front of our front foot, okay? So look at your contact position in terms of where are you actually hitting the ball? And it changes depending on where the pitch is. So on an inside pitch, right, you obviously need to make contact with that ball inside and further out in front. You need to recognize it's an inside pitch and pull your hands in and boom, you need to hit that ball further out in front. A middle pitch, it'd be here, and a way pitch, it would be a little bit further back here. So where are you hitting the ball? Now let's touch on mechanics. We're still in that same athletic position that we were in our launch position, right? Our front heel drops, we get to the point of contact. My front leg, I'm hitting against a firm front side. You don't wanna have any bend like this in your front leg you're leaking power that way. So we want to hit against a firm front side. My knees are kind of pinching together. As you can see in my back leg, 
I'm almost making a reverse L shape here, all right? You wanna have that good L shape. You don't wanna be you know, up too tall like this. I see a lot of young hitters that are way too tall with their, with their back leg at the point of contact. We wanna, have, we wanna stay back and be nice and low and in an athletic powerful position with a good L shape here. So that's kind of with our lower half. Um, then, you know, paying attention to what your, you know, your hands look like at the point of contact. My hands, no matter where the pitch is at, my hands are always above the barrel, okay? We never want to attack this baseball. And again, this is an extreme example, but if I was going to chop down on this ball, we never want to attack the baseball with our barrel above our hands. It's always, no matter the height of the pitch, if it's low, it's low like this, okay? Our hands are still above the barrel. Even on a high pitch, let's bring this as high as the T can go here. If I was gonna hit this pitch, I wouldn't hit it again. I wouldn't try and get on top of it like this. My hands would still be above the barrel, okay? My hands are also palm up, palm down at the point of contact. So what that means is, if I were to open up my hands, if I get to this point of contact here and open up my hands, my top hand, right hand for right-handed hitter is facing up. My left hand, my bottom hand is facing down. Okay, palm up, palm down. Not, not like this, you know, not like this, palm up, palm down. So those are some checkpoints, and obviously your eyes need to be down watching the baseball at the contact position. And lastly is extension. That's the last part of rebuilding your swing. And so extension, all I'll say is you need to focus on after you make contact with the baseball, right? We don't wanna get flippy with our hands. We don't wanna finish low like this. Finish high, okay? Finish high. And really, the lower the pitch, the higher the finish. So again, I was gonna hit that really low pitch. I have to create more of an angle with my shoulders here. So I'm gonna actually finish higher on that ball than I would on a high pitch up here. I'm still gonna finish my swing high, but not quite as steep of an angle. Does that make sense? So continue to, with your top hand, continue to drive through the ball, continue to focus on, as you make contact with the ball, gain ground with your top hand towards the pitcher like this, and get to in a good extended power V position, and then make sure that you're finishing your swing high, and that should really help you rebuild your swing, get back to squaring the baseball up. All right, so that is it. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, and if you're serious about getting your swing right before tryouts and you wanna maximize your bat speed, then what I want you to do is click on this card right up here. Go grab my free bat speed boosters workout, okay? It's 100% free. You just click on this card right up here and then that'll take you to a page where you just need to enter in your email address. That way I know exactly where to send this free bat speed workout. But this is filled with drills that are guaranteed to boost your bat speed, which is gonna help you boost your exit velocity. You're gonna be hitting the ball so much harder and further. You're gonna be spraying the ball all over the field, into the gaps and over the fence, all right? So go grab this free bat speed workout right now. Click on this card right here. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button for me. And last thing, if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week and I don't want you to miss any of them. And speaking of that, after you hit subscribe, you wanna make sure that you hit that little bell down there, turn your notifications on. That way you'll just be notified instantly when we upload a new video. So subscribe to the channel, turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.